Good morning, everybody, and welcome to this 10 time webinar. The 10 time webinar of today will recap the achievements of the joint initiative on standardization, the so called GIS, that has um, had its start three years ago. So, my name is Els, and I will be moderating this webinar. I can I hope you can you hear me well. If that's not the case, please feel free to enter a uh, comment in the question panel. Um, to get the most out of the webinar today, please use the Q&A panel also to submit your questions. So uh, the um, presentation will normally last for about half an hour. Since the topic today is a bit extensive, it might take a bit longer. But don't worry, if your question is not answered today, you will in any case have uh, an update on the question and the answer, of course, that we will upload on the Sense and Lag website. You will be informed when that is available for you. Uh, should you be on Twitter, you're always free to tweet about the topic. We have that hashtag 10 10 webinar that you can use to freely tweet and share the information. So let me present the speaker of today. His name is Alberto Simeone and he's Customer Solution Manager for Members and Technical Boards here at the San Samela Management Center. So please, Alberto, the floor is yours. Thank you, Els, and good morning to everyone. I was responsible for Sen and Senelec to coordinate uh, this initiative uh, within our system. So just, I would say, some background information. This initiative was launched in, uh, at the end of 2015 in the single market strategy, where the European Commission allied the need to modernize the European standardization system to better take on the challenges of a changing economy, increasing portals of services and digital innovation through a joint initiative. The aim was to make the European standard research system still capable of producing timely and market-driven standards in an inclusive way and consolidating Europe's leadership in international standardization. Therefore, in 2016, activities of GISA started. The joint initiative was uh, uh, a complete uh, uh, new approach in uh, tackling uh, uh, a series of topics uh, of uh, uh, common interest for uh, European stakeholders. First of all, the main concept is that the initiative uh, is driven by all stakeholders. It was not an initiative driven by the precondition, but all the stakeholders that are interest, were interested in the European status system <coughs> had a role. The European Commission provided support and the Secretariat for the uh, steering committee. It was not legally binding, so uh, there was not uh, a legal obligation to uh, participate, or there was not, uh, after the meeting uh, of the groups for the action, there was no legal commitment. But every stakeholder did the utmost to assess the feasibility of what was discussed in the meeting and also try to deliver what uh, it was committed. The idea is that this initiative should, should not replace or interpret existing legal framework. It was not uh, the, the, the objective to rediscuss the legal framework. It was an uh, initiative to see how things could be improved in the current legal framework. And more than 100 signatories uh, participate uh, in, uh, in the work from the European Commission, the EFTA Secretariat, uh, member states, the three European standard organizations, and uh, several industry uh, associations, and also associations representing societal interest. It was basically uh, made of a shared vision and 15 concrete actions. The vision uh, stated the message that the standardization is at the heart of the single market. The single market is one of the greatest achievements of the European Union. And that uh, there is uh, still room to further explore the potential of standards to strengthen the competitiveness of European business while enhancing societal welfare. So it's uh, recognized these, uh, these uh, powerful tool that standards are, that are both for uh, economy, but also for the uh, societal welfare. 
and then also to support your poli policy priorities and objectives through voluntary standards. This is the list of the 15 uh, actions that try, I try to cluster them in, in a way. Such so on one on the impact study of standards uh, uh, on economy and uh, uh, society, and this is uh, uh, ongoing, actually uh, started uh, at the end of uh, last year. And then we have uh, five actions that could be clustered uh, under the, uh, the regulations and policy heading. It is the awareness raising action towards national authorities, uh, CPR, action five. Action seven and eight are um, deeply linked to the regulation 25 and also uh, until the citation of standards. Action 11, how to improve the use of standards in public procurement. Then for the global outreach, Action 13, how to uh, export the European model in third countries. Uh, new opportunities means uh, better linking with research, promote service standards, and how standards can support the digital transformation of industry. And then in general, the actions for the engagement inclusiveness. Action 3, education about standard, standardization. A round table to include industry uh, needs uh, in the standardization and discussion in particular with the European Commission. And then the three action on, for the inclusiveness uh, of the weak stakeholders, meaning the uh, stakeholders representing uh, consumers, uh, environmental interest, uh, trade unions, uh, and also SMEs at European, international, and national. The, these 15 actions were uh, led by a steering committee that met uh, in these three years more or less uh, three times per year. And uh, this action closed at the end of 2019, so three years of very intensive, intensive work. And I would, uh, I would uh, recap already here what was the lesson learned, and then I will go in detail on the, on the achievements. The lessons learned is that uh, for sure, it has been a very useful uh, platform. Uh, useful platform, very inclusive. No one can claim to be have left out. Uh, all people that wanted to contribute to standardization uh, were uh, uh, recommended, uh, were able to participate. So informal, uh, informal platform to exchange views, improve the common understanding. Not always we have found an agreement, a common agreement uh, on some topics, but for sure we have understood, we have better understood each other uh, points of view. For sure, several actions achieve very concrete objectives. And then very frankly, we have to recognize that uh, the joint initiative uh, uh, revealed to be a weak instrument when dealing with topics uh, covered by legislation. For instance, the actions uh, that were related to the construction product regulation, but also uh, regulation 1025 or European standardization have problem to, uh, to progress well. In particular, we will see in the next slides that uh, there were some events that uh, have interfered with the, 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 uh, the smooth operations of, the, of these actions. Uh, anyway, some prerogatives are for the European legislator. It was clear that uh, it was impossible to discuss them or at least to modify them uh, through this uh, joint initiative. In particular, Sen and Senelec have led five uh, uh, out of 15. You will see them uh, in the screen. And uh, the first two topics were the one that were related to the European legislation and for which discussions were much more difficult. Okay, let's start with G section five, the construction product regulation through standards. I have to thank and recognize the importance for Sen and Senelec of the Senelec BT Working Group 9 CPR that acted as a mirror group for this uh, action. What was the objective and also what, what was achieved, for sure, there was an increased awareness of the standards community on the key aspects when drafting standards in candidate support to the CPR. 
and also a lot of uh, guidance documents have been developed. It's been made, has been made enormous work from uh, this uh, group. But uh, um, still, uh, CPR uh, is uh, a very uh, sensitive and I would say different uh, uh, legal uh, environment where uh, CPR basically is not considered by the European Commission as a new approach directly. And harmonized standards are considered in that case mandatory. If you add this to the fact that uh, uh, in 2018, uh, there were the, the, the effect uh, of the uh, James Elliott case, and so a different interpretation from the European Commission on the role of the European Commission itself in managing the standards process, this led to a situation where the, 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 the assessment and citation of standards became very, very difficult. The James Hill case states that the harmonized standards form part of European law, and also that is the European Commission responsibility in initiating, managing, and monitoring the harmonized standards. So these are the few sentences that. Uh, led the European Commission to a, a, a different interpretation of its role. Therefore, since then, the European Commission has adopted a legal approach when assessing the harmonized standards. Only fully compliant standards will have a chance to be cited, where fully compliance means harmonized standards, the content of which covers only essential characteristics in line with the market. That is something we learned from the past and also from what uh, happen in uh, happens different uh, uh, legislation. Anyway, you will find uh, here you have uh, at the end of this page, you have the uh, email, uh, you have the web page of our website. Well, all these uh, list of uh, uh, guidance documents uh, are stored and uh, I really recommend you to take a look because uh, uh, the community uh, managed to uh, at least uh, have a, a common understanding of what is needed. Then we go to GIS Action 8. Also, in this case, we have the Sensana Repeating Working Group 12 European Standards, European Legislative Framework that supported the, the work as a mirror group for Sensana. This is a very important action that uh, is supposed to cover. Uh, all what is around uh, the uh, uh, all what uh, lead to the final citation of the standards, starting with uh, the, the shaping of the standardization request from the European Commission to the standards development by uh, the European Standards Organization until the assessment and citation. And also in this case, as I said, for the CPR. These, uh, uh, I would say, unexpected, we call them unexpected events. So, the European, the ruling of the European Court of Justice has uh, um, strongly limited the benefit from this action. In particular, um, the, the, the ruling court case, uh, uh, the different is interpretation on the uh, role of the European Commission in managing the process for the harmonized standards led to the need for the European Commission to develop a communication that was out in uh, November 2018, Commission 764, uh, trying to explain what, uh, what then are the roles of the ISOs, what are the roles uh, of the European Commissions, what are the roles of the uh, HS consultants. And still, uh, the European Commission is working to a final document to complement this communication, that is the guidance document on operational aspects of Regulation 2025, which we are contributing, and so we will see, uh, we look forward to have it published. And as I said, also this changed the way the European Commission shape future standards request. So it's uh, there is a new 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 model for the standards request that is still, I would say, under discussion. We do not totally agree with it anyway. It is part of the consequences of the, uh, the new court case. And also for what regards this detail checks on the submitted harmonized standards before citation. 
Anyway, we have done our part under this action, this action 8. Uh, so in, in May 2019, Technical Board of San Senelec had approved the review of the mechanism of these ADO groups for standardization requests that we set up in order to be ready on time when the European Commission uh, inform us that they would like to develop a standardization request, there is their so-called track. And also we have worked uh, very intensively to define, it has been done at the end of 2019, a new process for standards development in order to optimize the time to market of standards. We have called these flexible standards. We will have webinars on here in the next uh, uh, weeks, uh, and these uh, will be implemented as of April 2020. Uh, as part of a discussion on, the, on how uh, the digital transformation could help in future the standards development uh, process and citation, we as a Senelec, we have we are carrying out a few projects under digital transformation for the online authoring standards and also standards of the future that is about the uh, interpretable uh, sta um, standards um, interpretable machine standards then we go to action 12 it's for the service standards to encourage the greater development and use of european service standards it was led in this case from uh, uh, our uh, uh, advisory group on standards. So the G's Action 12 group was completely uh, included in SENSAX. And here I would say that we have very concrete achievements. First of all, there was uh, um, the SEN defined strategy and with the help of all G's Action 12 participants, we arrived to the full implementation of this strategy that was supported also by an ad hoc communication campaign made of uh, rich communication package uh, with video infographics uh, i as uh, elsa said uh, the, you will have this presentation with you all these uh, hyperlinks work so i really recommend uh, all of you to click on them and go on the web page because all the elements there also the communication package are really useful both for the national standard bodies because a lot of actions uh, need to be than at, uh, at the national level, but also for uh, the European uh, um, Service Association, also public authorities. Also, a webinar is available to promote servitization of industry as the business trend impacting manufacturing industries with a strong footprint on service delivery. And I would say that uh, uh, one of the most important achievements is uh, really an increased awareness on the benefits that service standards may bring to the market by public authorities, service business, consumers, trade associations, and manufacturing industry. This is part of the communication campaign with a lot of documents that are available. Section 13 uh, was uh, on the uh, promotion of the European regulatory model supported by voluntary standards and its, so, and its close link to international standardization intercounts. It was led by our Senate Senate policy groups. I would say that in this case, uh, Senate Senate uh, had really a major role uh, in uh, uh, get concrete achievements. Let's say that the G Section 13 provide in general additional impetus for Senate and Senate like a renewed focus on strengthening and prioritizing partnerships with foreign standardization bodies. There was this uh, very important uh, uh, exercise to identify countries and regions for deepest cooperation with a short list of five, and now currently we have three task forces on Africa, China, and the Gulf region for which uh, long-term objectives and annual plans have been defined and also these of course in cooperation with the foreign partners and these has improved our relations and our dialogue with these foreign partners foreign partners also concerning the role of standardization to support digitization of european industry we have achieved a very concrete uh, results in this case uh, i have 
to uh, give credit to our sense selling working group six on uh, ICT. Basically, G section 14, when was launched? Um, it was uh, 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 the activity of this action were injected in a new initiative that was launched by DG Grow and DG Connect, uh, creating a working group on standardization to support uh, in support to the digitizing European industry initiative. So it was a working group under the umbrella of the multi-stakeholder platform on ICT, the MSP and the ECE initiative, Digitize European Industry. This led to uh, a very good uh, uh, coordination and work uh, with DigiGrow and DigiConnect, but also uh, several uh, industry stakeholders. And uh, as, uh, as uh, achievements, uh, you will see that there are several records, for instance, uh, it, that been defined this working group, the needs for the stand, for standardization in the context of digital manufacturing and also for the mapping of ongoing standardization activities. It has been defined a model for the synchronization of the various standardization activities, both at national and European level, and also the roadmap for standardization in support of digitizing European industry. From our side, to better coordinate uh, the, uh, this aspect, uh, uh, along with ETSI, we have created the Sensor ETSI Coordination Group on Smart Manufacturing that, of course, will work in the next uh, uh, years. If we go to the other actions not under Sen and Senelec lead, if I want to recap on the main achievements for Sen and Senelec, so this is for what means for, for us. Concerning uh, G Section 2, uh, for sure, we have improved our cooperation with the JRC, which is the Joint Research Center of the European Commission, and uh, uh, um, this helped uh, to position Sen and Senelec as catalyzers linking European research and innovation with standardization. We had a very uh, um, well, uh, very successful project, Bridge 2, that built uh, on the Previous one, bridge it, uh, one, how to bridge, uh, how to bridge the gap between uh, research and the standardization. So bridge two, promote the integration of research and innovation into standardization for the market uptake of innovations from Horizon 2020 and other EU funded projects. Concerning G section four, under the lead of our uh, National Standard Body, German National Standard Body, DIN. It has improved the relationship between uh, uh, some NSBs and their member states. It has been, uh, the two workshops have been well attended. They have raised uh, awareness uh, uh, by public authorities on uh, standardization uh, through the collection and promotion of case studies on how standards can support public authorities to implement the regulation and achieve policy goals. The joint initiative, in particular, the, the, the three action, uh, 9, 10, uh, and 15, uh, gave us the possibility to further improve the relationship uh, with the, the uh, European organization representing uh, with the weak stakeholders, meaning uh, uh, the SMEs uh, and uh, stakeholders in uh, representing uh, uh, environmental interests, trade unions, and also consumers. Uh, as uh, just to recap on the main uh, on the main uh, achievements, uh, now an in e learning tools and courses are available for the societal stakeholders. I really invite you to go on the website and uh, uh, test yourself first of all to learn and then test yourself to see how much you know about standardization also, a, civil, a brochure has been done in order to increase visibility of uh, the uh, societal uh, organizations. And then we have uh, uh, supported SBS in uh, uh, producing uh, this video, 
standards, a business tool for SME that I really recommend you. It's very well done, uh, concrete, go to the point, and give a clear idea of what uh, standards can be for the small uh, enterprise. And then uh, I need to mention GIS Action 11 that was led by uh, our Swedish member, SIS, in cooperation with the Danish standards and also uh, with the support of our Hungarian member, MSZ. And it was uh, uh, very successful. Um, it was to increase the role of standards for public procurement. And there were four different line of action. Each of them delivered uh, a concrete uh, uh, result. So now we have a guide for, refers, for re refreshing standards in public procurement, which is publicly freely available also on the Sensenelec website. We have also an analysis, which is a, a document, a self-standing document, on using refreshing standards in public procurement in some member states. Very useful. Um, in, in, uh, in SEN, uh, following uh, the initiative of our Swedish member, we have a new technical committee, CENTC461, on public procurement, aiming at defining European standards on integrity and accountability in the context of the new public procurement. And then several workshops have been organized uh, in Europe, uh, along with uh, a dissemination package with examples and exercise on how to use standards in support of public procurement. And for this action 11, I have also to recognize the importance and the support from the European Commission that have given some funds to uh, these uh, activities. You will find uh, a, a detailed um, explanation on uh, the objective, on uh, how the activities within the actions have been carried out, including the milestones and main achievements in uh, this link that go to the official page of the European Commission. So for each of the 15 actions, you will have a detailed uh, description. Again, what are the key learning points of the joint initiative? For sure, it has been a great momentum to improve common understanding and cooperate on topics of common interest. It was a very transparent, inclusive process, open to all actors. Several actions achieved very concrete objectives. And uh, as I said, it proved to be not really suitable with topics covered by legislation, because uh, especially in light of uh, uh, the core case of uh, James Elliott, uh, uh, in that case, uh, the legal environment or the uh, um, legal consequences were much uh, stronger than uh, the, uh, uh, I would say, uh, commitment, the goodwill from all the actors uh, to find an agreement. But also uh, in this case, for these two actions on CPR, John 5, and on Regulation 1025, I want to say anyway that uh, as it is in, uh, in Ballot 1, it was very important to have the joint initiative because at least we had understood what was uh, the, uh, uh, the challenges and what were the consequences of the James Elliott case. And so we had a, a common understanding at least uh, on these uh, elements. Okay, now it's 